Liz Lamping here, PHRA's Executive Director. Welcome to P4, People, Purpose, Passion, Pittsburgh. P4 is brought to you by our members and sponsors, Latitude and the University of Pittsburgh Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education. We appreciate their support and we will hear from them throughout the podcast, beginning with the University of Pittsburgh Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education. everybody. We are excited to dive into the conference preparation uh, for PHRA's 2024 event. Welcome to P4, where we're going to highlight some of the keynote speakers coming to this year. Remember, P4 podcast focuses on people, purpose, passion, and Pittsburgh being PHRA, Pittsburgh Human Resources Association. We're thrilled to prevent this year's keynote speakers, accomplished business leaders, strategists, practitioners, and peers to many of us. Our exceptional keynote speakers are a lineup of folks that are here to captivate and inspire us before, during, and after the conference. This podcast is going to help us stay motivated and eager to dive into this year's conference. Maybe you're thinking, hey, is this the right place for me to be this year? You're going to find out a lot more as we dive in over the next 20 to 30 minutes uh, with Julie and Richard here today. Reminder that this year's conference, Sharing Solutions, Success Through Synergy, is going to help you stay on top of what's coming in the world of work, the next chapters of this new world of work. No matter where you are in HR, this is a conference for you. A couple of tidbits to think about. Captivating keynotes that are building on diverse workforce pipelines, revolutionizing HR narratives, this conference is promising to ignite passion, drive, and transformative insights. We're going to get a lot more into that today. We want to ensure that all attendees leave feeling empowered to revolutionize their workplaces and their careers. Quick reminder, join us in person September 26, 27. It's coming up not too distant future, Doubletree uh, uh, by Hilton in the Pittsburgh area, Cranberry specifically. Uh, 910 Sheridan Drive uh, in Mars. So without further ado, you don't want to hear too much from me. Let's talk about who our guests are. I'm going to give a quick couple of words introduction, then leave it to them to share more, and then we'll dive into the meat and potatoes of things. So first we have Julie, uh, who's a senior partner in HCM Advisory with UKG. Julie, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, please? Yeah, Pete, you have me energized. I mean, geez, wow, let's go. Let's go, let's HR. Go. Let's go. Come to the conference, everybody. Um, hi, Julie Devlin. Yeah, I am with UKG. Uh, I am a senior partner, HCM Advisory. I do a lot of strategy work. I consult, uh, do a lot of HR consulting, and I get the good fortune of going around and speaking um, around the country and, and into Canada um, about workplace trends and about HR trends and about how we can make work better. So, Yeah, uh, I spent 17 plus years as an HR VP, um, so my background is as a practitioner, so I come at this from uh, that that lens, if you will. I I think that HR is is vastly undervalued in organizations, uh, but it's easy for me to say that, right? Um, I'm also an HR professor. I've been teaching for 18 years, Um, so yeah, just a big HR nerd and uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Love it. Where are you based out of right now, Julie? I live in Maryland. If you were to pick a home base. (laughs) Yeah, I travel a lot. I live in Maryland, but I grew up in Philadelphia. Um, So Pennsylvania through and through. There we go. Hold on. Last question. Who are you cheering for (laughs) sports-wise? I realize that I'm on on this podcast and I have the wrong necklace on today, but I'm a big Phillies fan. However... um, I like the Ravens too. Um, oh, jeez! All right, know, terrible tower still up in the but, background. But Hold I on. have I have big respect for the Steelers um, and the Pirates. I love Paul Skeens. I think he's great. Um, I think the Pirates are an up and coming team. Um, we can talk sports the whole time if you want, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I grew up in Philly, so I'm, I'm a, a Philadelphia and uh, and Baltimore fan. 
Cool. Uh, as cool as that can be, rather. Last <laughs> thing for, for the community and the listeners here. One fun fact that uh, people may not know about you, other than the f- piece that you're a rock star masonry uh, <laughs> person. Yeah, yeah, right. No, um, you know, kind of keeping with the sports theme, another part of my life is that I'm a big sports card and memorabilia collector. Um, mm-hmm. It's literally the second half of my life. So I spend a lot of time collecting cards, trading cards, buying, selling, going to shows, uh, speaking at conferences for in the card industry, all of that. So well, no. very cool. Some yeah. of my friends just got back from one of those conferences in, yeah, in Ohio Cleveland. somewhere. In yeah, Cleveland. in Cleveland. The, yeah. Na- the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tomorrow I go to New York City to go to the Fanatics Fest, um, which is a wow. big, big conference um, for uh, for sports. Yeah, just take my money, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, tr- transitioning from, from Julie over to Richard. So, Richard... We, I only have a couple of words about you, but that it's not going to do all of the justice, right? Entrepreneur, published author, international keynote speaker, award-winning fine artist with an emphasis on visual impact. I've heard about you many, many times before we came into the session today. So one, I'm excited to learn more today, hear about what you're up to, and super pumped to see you in action uh, mm-hmm. at the end of September. So tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you're up to. Well, I'm uh, first of all, I'm here in the state of Oklahoma, in the middle of the country, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, but I'm a, I started out and still am a professional fine artist. So those huge, those huge paintings that you see in hotels and in corporate uh, buildings and portraits at universities and stuff, I'm one of the artists that creates those. And a number of years ago, I started taking some artistic principles and sharing those with the corporate world on how to how to come up with ideas that have value to them. And, and yes, I said values because a lot of folks can come up with ideas, but they don't hold water. And so we're looking for innovative ideas to move the needle, uh, to make a difference and to create and to create something of value. Uh, but I, I'm really looking forward and just to let you in on a secret of what I'm going to be doing is that on stage, I'm going to take a large canvas and I'm going actually going to paint a picture, uh, something I'm not sure exactly what right now, but uh, the attendees are going to watch me create something. So I don't I don't come with a bunch of PowerPoints and uh, stuff. I'm going to create my own PowerPoint right there. Uh, so they're going to watch it come from nothing to a finished piece, literally within a few minutes. Do we have uh, to bring like our own goggles and be in the splash zone or anything no, like no, that? No, 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 no. We're we're good on that. <laughs> wow. Uh, but, okay. Yeah, we're going to turn the music up and we'll have a good time doing it. Yeah. All all for that. A couple yeah. of quick follow-on questions. Sure. How the heck did you get into that? How did I get into it? Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, 20, 25 years ago, some little little old lady called me up and said, hey, Richard, can you come talk to our uh, civil service group? And uh, and I said, sure. And they fed me a roast beef sandwich. And uh, a month or so later, somebody else called me and said, hey, we'll feed you lunch if you come and talk about your artwork. And, and I'm talking, seriously? So I'm getting to all these free lunches. And, uh, and then I started selling paintings to these folks uh who were not my regular target audience uh but the main thing is that i was having fun and uh uh that's kind of the first uh thing that i want to is is it gonna be fun to do <laughs> and so the next thing you knew i was tight uh speaking to the major fortune 100, 100 companies around the world not just here in the united states and uh but uh over in europe and asia and uh it's just been riding this train for years now and uh, uh, perfected it, have fine-tuned it and uh, have wrote about it. And uh, I, I just love what I do. I mean, it's not a job, it's I'm having fun. And I get to go to, you know, to Pittsburgh, one of my favorite towns, one of the most diverse towns I've ever been into the in the United States. I mean, you can, I've literally drove down the road and saw a Orthodox Jews speaking to a punk rocker one time. And I thought, I like this town. I mean, that's <laughs> pretty diverse. And of course, Andy Warhol's from there. 
And, yeah, uh, and, and both those people having the conversation had Steelers jerseys on. So we just want to make yeah, that very, very clear, yeah. Jolie, that they all have Steelers jerseys on. Yes, no yeah. matter where you go. And, and doing that thing with the towel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to find a way to get to Pittsburgh early enough to come to Richard's session because it sounds the, cool. I, 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 <laughs> I, I'm not sure what time I'm getting in, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to make sure that I, I'm actually going to be driving from, I think I'm driving from Cleveland, actually. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to um, look for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Gonna, I really want to see this. Everybody needs to come to this conference. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 Before we get into the the question, I'm going to ask. Sure. I'd like uh, to to share a fun fact about you, Richard. Obviously, you've been everywhere. You've you know met a lot yeah. of different people. What is something that people may not know about you yet? Well, I think something that some people find it different uh, or unique, but I it's just a part of my personality and. Uh, that I learned to ride a unicycle before I did a bicycle. Wow. And so that's, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, in my neighborhood, I ride my little unicycle around and uh, chase kids. And uh, uh, I just like, I just like that idea of being different just because, you know, it, it just sets me apart and uh, the uniqueness and uh, uh, keeps me somewhat in shape Uh but uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I've got probably about six of them in my house, and one of them six foot tall, which I don't ride as often as I need to or want to. But uh, it's pretty high up there. Now, yeah. if you could bring that and you could ride the unicycle while you paint, that would be amazing. Well, well, I no, do I'm that. not the I'm not the first one. I'm not the yes. first one who said that. And, right? and yeah. juggle, yeah. I can I can juggle, yeah. I can okay, juggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'll be memorable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Liz, we're just going to call a quick audible on the conference. Don't mind us, but they, yeah. we, we have some other fun fun built in for everybody that'll be in attendance at the side MCC. circus, right? Yeah. It'll be very much HR. As yes. Side circus. <laughs> yeah. some, some almost structured chaos. Yeah, that does yeah. translate to a little bit of what we're talking about. Yeah. Before I get into this question, I swear I'm going to actually ask the question, where's the best place for people to, to find uh, each of you online if they want to learn a little bit about your backgrounds ahead of time? Of course, we have the bio that's been shared and distributed in the booklet online is it linkedin is it somewhere else just let us know uh, I, no go ahead richard sorry i think you can look look me up at richard height speaks uh h-i-g-h-t you can also see some of my performances on youtube and uh some of my fine art uh at richard height fine arts.com and instagram and you know the typical stuff that uh they they can look me up and uh, and find some some pictures and see some artwork. Got it. Yeah, for me, uh, LinkedIn and also um, juliedevlin.com or hrspeaking.com um, is my personal site. So um, I, I do this for I do this outside of my corporate job as well. So hrspeaking.com nice work on the domain yeah. selection. Wow. Listen, listen, I I I couldn't believe it was available. <laughs> Well done. Well yeah. Done. Uh, okay. So here's the question. We're going to, I'm going to ask it, Richard, I'll ask you to to reply and then might have a little bit of uh, thoughts back and forth on it. Then we'll go over to Julie, the same question. I put it in the chat so you're able to see it. It was shared in advance, but the question that I'd like each of you to answer, please, how can HR professionals and organizations integrate creativity, mental resilience, diversity, innovative strategies, and community-centric approaches to build a sustainable and thriving workforce in today's rapidly evolving work environment? So that's the question. And if you're able to share your thoughts and perspective on it, and maybe a little bit about how your session is going to hit on some of those points, please. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let, let me answer uh, from, from my perspective and understanding where I'm coming from. I think the, the organiz uh, organization uh, has to determine how much tolerance are they going to let innovative out out of the box thinking? How much are they going to allow that? Uh, a lot of a lot of organizations will get up there and preach that they're innovative and open to new ideas, but they don't allow anything <laughs> to fail. Uh, and if you're if you're going to be successful, you have to have a certain degree of failure uh, and an opportunity to create failure and then learn from it, test it and learn from it. 
when I was eight years old, I went to a basketball camp and I learned to pivot, which means that I had one leg firmly on the ground. Uh, it was it, it was the fundamentalist, but the other leg was switching around and moving. And to be innovative, we've got to be able to move. We still have our fundamentals of what's what's bringing in the profit and the income, but we got to have that other leg to move. And we have to give organizations opportunity uh, and employees to, to fail, uh, and to, to come up with the, the next best idea. And I want to tell you right now that the best ideas are parked right next to the most foolish ideas. Uh, they really are. And sometimes we judge an idea too quickly before it uh, uh, ever gets grounded, before it ever gets nurtured. We judge it that we don't have the budget uh, we don't have the time, we don't have the resources on it, and we judge it, and we never let that great idea ever come to life. Uh, one other thing I would say that uh, I'm privileged and honored to uh, to be a father of, a, of my daughter who has special needs, and she has Down syndrome. Avery's just this uh, sweet, uh, intelligent young lady, but she doesn't learn like everybody else. And so sometimes we have to find the second and third right answer. And so one of the things that we do to help train her uh, to find ways to communicate, ways to express herself, is that uh, we do things backwards. And what, what I mean is like maybe uh, mama goes out shopping and out with the girls and Avery and I will order a pizza and we will eat it backwards. And uh, from the crust down, it's fun. It's but uh, the idea is that we're doing things differently, but we get the job done and effectively. And sometimes we'll walk around the block backwards, just to look. Just the idea of training ourselves to look for the second and third right answers. Uh, a lot of times we've done the first answer because that's the way we've been trained to do it. We've been educated to do it. And that's the way we've always done it. And we don't even, we stopped looking for the second or third answer. So I'm going to share with the audience some, uh, some tips on how to look for the second and third right answer that the creative ideas that have value to it. I, I love it. And the, uh last piece I might ask in there is how do we bring everybody together in this community collaborative approach, Richard? How would you touch on that piece? You know, it's, it's, it's all about culture, about developing a culture. Uh, I know at Pixar, they don't, all their tables at Pixar out in California are round. Uh, so nobody has a uh, top-down approach. Nobody sits at the end of the table controlling the table. Everybody is equal in that room when they come in there to create ideas. And that's what we have to be open to because in some corporations, it's just the uh, art department or it's certain the marketing department that that's their job. Well, great ideas hold no boundaries and it can really come from from any direction, from any department. And we have to be able to be sensitive to listen to the ideas uh, and hear the value that's in them. Love it. Great ideas hold no boundaries and a couple of other great tidbits there. So I'm excited for the session. Julie, I guess we could do a drum roll if we wanted to, but <laughs> everybody imagine a drum roll. Now, Julie, please answer the question. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, first, I'd like to say, Richard, you know, when I was an HRVP, I, I worked at for 17 plus years as at an organization that served adults with with uh, intellectual disabilities. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that story is near and dear to my heart. And I completely understand what you're saying, right? It is about just doing things differently. And um, absolutely love that. But um, you know, when I when I look at this question, how can HR professionals, you know, integrate creativity and mental resilience and diversity, innovative strategies, all of that stuff? I think it starts with one thing and it, it, within an organization. And Richard touched on it when he mentioned the culture word, but I'm going to take that a step farther and say it starts with having the psychological safety and employees having the psychological safety to think outside the box and to bring those ideas to light. 
or to the people that can actually implement those ideas, right? Um, because I find that in a lot of organizations, we take a mentality or they make, they take a mentality. And I was guilty of this too, of, hey, this is the way it's always been done. So this is the way that we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. So we have to make sure that we are getting out of that mentality. And one of the ways that we do that, and I'll talk some, I'll talk about some other ways in my, my presentation is to think about what has shaped our views of work as individuals like in, from our past, like for me, it's my dad, right? I watched my dad work hard and my, my work, work ethic comes from him and all of that, right? I can, I can identify that. What or who has shaped your view of work? And then how can you play a role in bridging all of these gaps to getting to where the organization wants to go? from an innovation perspective, from a diversity perspective, from all the things, right? So when we talk about a rapidly evolving work environment, that makes it even more difficult because it is rapidly evolving and change. the pace of change has never been this fast yet. It'll never be this slow again. That's what Trudeau, Trudeau said in 2018, right? In his famous speech. And I really, really think that that is so apropos with today's world of work, right? We have never, ever had a time where there, we've had so much change going on and also having to live in uncertainty makes right. atta- makes attaining all of the creativity and the mental resilience and the diversity, all of those things that we're trying to attain at work makes it difficult because we have all these uncertain things. And once we put something in place, we're wondering, oh, did we do the right thing or do we have to change it? Do we have the budget? There's so many questions. So I think, again, going back to the, the sort of the crux of all of this from, from my perspective is that that feeling of psychological safety on an individual level that turns into a macro level for the organization to have organizational psychological safety. So I think that starts with, I think it starts with communication. And, and I know that sounds so cliche, but it really does. And also, um, you know, folks feeling, feeling okay, I, I think Richard, but to make mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. It's okay to make a mistake. We all all are human. You're not going to lose your job if you if you make a mistake. Obviously, within within the confines of making sure you're doing the right thing, right? Um, so so that's where I'd go with it. And, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on a lot of this in in my talk. Um, the new conversations in HR, right? I I feel like in HR we have uh, we have a lot of the same conversation over and over and over and over and over again. And you know, that's the definition of insanity because nothing's going to change if we keep talking right. about same thing. We all have to onboard better. Okay, great. Yes, we all have to onboard better. But what is it really about, right? It's really about looking at that unique individual who has a child who they they have to take the daycare and the daycare doesn't open till the top of the hour, but you're asking them to come in at at 8.45 in the morning, right? But their daycare opens at nine, nine o'clock in the morning. So can you, you know, can you push that back 15 minutes for them? right? Just so they can, they can get their work done and and have that less stress because that's part of the uncertainty conversation. So I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this and, uh, you know, Hey, (laughs) there's going to be even more, right? What's going to come down the pike in the next few weeks. None of us know. Um, so uh, I'm, you know, make it as current as possible. That's what I plan Mm -hmm. to do. So Mm -hmm. thank thank you. And iterate as needed and not don't don't be scared. Don't stifle innovation and progress with stuck in the past. I'm with you. One final question for each of you outside of favorite places to travel, because you've been to a lot of different places. The 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 theme for the conference this year is sharing solutions, success through synergy. Any single thought on the topic? and the focus before we wrap up today? Uh, well, I'll, I'll go, I'll go first. Oh, no. um, yeah. um, success through synergy. That's a lot of alliteration. Um, and that's like, I think that, so when I think about success through synergy, right? It's like, how do we get everybody on the same page re- by also recognizing that everyone's page looks a little different. Um, so, I think it's more so about bridging bridging gaps. But when I think about it too, if we're looking at the conference and the conference theme, think about it from an HR practitioner perspective. How do we synergize as a profession, right? How do we all rally around each other and support each other? Because that's the other thing I'm going to talk about in my presentation um, about HR uh, mental health um, and and some of the, the challenges that we're seeing surrounding that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, success through synergy. Yeah. That's how, that's how success is, is achieved. Um, but it's not ever a perfect science. I think that's something else we have to recognize. There's a lot of trial and error when, when it comes to work. Richard? You know, I, I, I look at everything as, as like a painting because 
when I do the paintings, I'm trying to uh, create as much diversity as possible with some of my brush strokes and the if, if it's oil painting. So I'm I'm really looking for that diversity to make it uh, so when a viewer looks at it, it's pleasing to the eye and entertaining for them to watch. So I understand the value of diversity. One of the things that I will be stressing on is uh, what what is it uh, when we come into a place? What assumptions do we bring? So what's our what's our what's our blind spots uh, that might be holding us back to be able to be uh, truly a part of the collaboration of creating something unique and valuable? Uh, so we're going to we're going to see some blind spots that maybe we didn't see prior to that. And that's just good. That's just going to open up a whole new opportunity uh, for people to resonate from and, and see new possibilities. Yeah. We, we don't know what we don't know. I want to Try. thank you for uh, jo joining us today on P4 and just a couple of recap thoughts here to kind of bring, bring it all home. Uh, so from, from playing cards and HR, but, uh, making, making HR, HR fun and then roast beef sandwiches and artwork <laughs> paintings with values. You know, we heard each of you talking about, Hey, don't, don't be scared of failure that stagnates innovation. Be ready to pivot. I'm a basketball fan. So I love, love the analogy there. Uh, the best ideas might be parked next to some of the most foolish ideas, and it takes time to uncover them in that open mind as well. Doing things differently and looking for the second and third answers is something that's important, and great ideas hold no boundaries. That one really stuck out to me, and of course, I'm going to go try and eat my pizza backwards. Exactly. Uh, also, on the other side, right, starts with having psychological safety at the individual level so that the innovation can grow up and bubble up to the organizational level, not just to have those ideas, but then to share them. And then I also love the question that you tossed out there, Julie, of who or what has shaped your view of work? So as we think about sharing solutions and success through synergy for the conference this year, you know, how can we bring our people together and how can we all come together as HR professionals? So we all have this amazing canvas in front of us. Let's create something beautiful together. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Richard. That's a mic drop. Yeah, it's a mic Everybody drop. else, we'll see you soon. I'm looking forward to meeting everyone. Happy trails. People do matter. And at the end of the day, we cannot get any work done if we don't have the right people in place. Are your people connected? Latitude is the one-stop shop people connection software platform. Our software workshops and programming facilitate new employee onboarding, manager 101s, stay interviews, mentorship programs, and peer networking to increase retention, engagement, satisfaction, productivity, profitability, and happiness. Imagine a technology that intersects your calendar with LinkedIn, Zoom, Google Docs, and your CRM. Contact Latitude today to schedule a conversation. The PHRA P4 podcast was created to help build HR readers through discussions with thought and business leaders on the most critical success factor of any business, its people. If you enjoy an episode, please help us spread the word by subscribing to the podcast and providing us a rating. We would love for you to take a screenshot of the episode, tag PHRA, and share it with your followers. Until next time, thank you.